For the Inu people, the Magpie River is our history, is our land, it's our medicine plant, it's our food, it's our water. The Magpie River is everything for us. Flowing through the rugged Canadian shield and lush boreal forests of eastern Quebec, the Magpie lives up to its reputation as one of the province's last great wild rivers. But this extraordinary body of water is now known for something else. It's the first ecosystem in Canada to be granted the same legal rights as a person. We traveled to a remote area of Quebec to meet the unlikely alliance of people behind the river's new Bill of Rights. My grandmother, she's 82 now, and she used to live all years on the land. Up until the 1960s, the Innu of Iquanashi First Nation lived a nomadic lifestyle, following the caribou inland in the winter and traveling down the rivers to the coast in the summer. Lydia Mistokosho Paradi works here at the local cultural center. All the history that the elders are talking about, it's there. It's not just a physical thing. It's the spirit of the, the land, the river, the trees, and she gave us a lot. So that's why we have to protect her. This is what they're worried about. This massive hydroelectric development on the nearby Romaine River produces enough green energy to power nearly half a million homes in Quebec for a year. But it also flooded hundreds of square kilometers of forest, altering the river and the landscape forever. It's a loss that has had a profound impact on Georgette Mishtokosho's family. Moi, je dirais que ça m'a enlevé tous mes souvenirs d'enfance, mais les souvenirs d'enfance de maman, les souvenirs de ma grand-mère, parce que notre territoire ancestral de famille a été as ground was being broken on the Romaine River, Hydro-Quebec began exploring similar plans for the Magpie. The project never came to fruition, but the threat galvanized people to act. Toutes les rivières sont quasiment toutes anarchées, et puis on veut pas que ça se produise sur la rivière Magpie. Tellement encore sauvage, il faut préserver cet état-là. Jenny Smolin Picard represents the Innu Council of Iquanishi in a regional alliance with environmentalists and municipal officials. Mais pourquoi pas en, en attitré pour comme notre rivière. Puis je pense que c'est la grosse différence qui fait que dans le colonialisme, on a toujours comme un peu un être supérieur. Tandis qu'en mettant dans notre vision à nous, il nous dirait qu'on est des êtres à part égale. And so, in February 2021, came the historic move. Two parallel resolutions by the Innu Council of Iquanishi and the regional government of Mingani. They granted the river nine rights, including the right to flow and the right to sue. You know, the rights of nature, you could say, is a way to essentially bring that indigenous value system into Western structures of law. Mari Margil is one of the leaders of the rights of nature movement. Over the last decade, forests, rivers, and lakes, from New Zealand to Colombia, have been granted legal personhood rights. There's sort of this growing consensus that environmental laws are not enough to protect nature. Nature is considered rightless under the law, under most legal systems, which means that nature is in this sort of category of being considered a commodity, property, an it. Legal persons have rights and responsibilities, and also possess the ability to sue and be sued. But a legal person doesn't have to be human. For example, corporations are considered legal persons, as are churches and ships. With personhood rights, ecosystems would no longer be seen under the law as an object to be owned and exploited, but rather a legal subject with its own rights. If you have, for instance, a corporation that's polluting a river, violating the rights of that river to be a healthy, thriving ecosystem, a government or people on the ground can seek to enforce those rights 
not only on behalf of the river, but in the name of the river itself. And if the river's rights are upheld in court, the corporation would have to stop polluting the river and could even have to pay to restore it back to a healthy state. The Magpie River case marks the first time in the movement's history that the rights of an ecosystem were recognized by an Indigenous community and a non-Indigenous community simultaneously. That's a really important step forward, but it can't simply be Indigenous peoples taking it forward. This is about Western cultures as well, needing to recognize how their culture, their economies and so forth are deeply impacting the health of the natural world. Bonjour, hello. Bonjour. Luke Noel is the top elected official for the region of Mingani. He oversaw the county's resolution on the rights of the Magpie River. For us, what we want is to protect our environment. So we want to be affected by populations north of us. We want to be directly affected by the change, by the increase of the temperature. I think the economy must develop and continue to develop, it's certain, but in another way. Luke sees ecotourism as the future economic driver of the region and says the county is prepared to fight for the river, even if that means going to court. If we have to do disobedience civil to protect sites, to protect the climate change, to protect the nature, we will do it. We want to keep a river, one of the five best rivers in the world, for our activities in our lives. All over the world come here for whitewater rafting expeditions with Danny Pellet, whose company, Boreal River Adventures, runs on the Magpie. It's quite a hike to get to the banks of the river, but Danny and his friend Sylvain Roy volunteered to show us the way. So this is Magpie Falls. Nice place to build the dam. This is a world-class river, incredible nature, really clean water, really good fishing. The air is super fresh, um, and the terrain around here is really dramatic. And then as you go through the rapids, you kind of really feel the water splashing on you. So I guess it's like an experience of really connecting with the place, but also with yourself and with your senses. There aren't many places like this left. Expanding legal personhood rights to a river or a forest is a revolutionary concept. And even its advocates understand that this could hinder growth in a country like Canada, but say there is a bigger economic picture. We are seeing the impacts from things like global warming, climate change, species extinction, which are having very extreme economic impacts. We have this, I think, really false notion of what's actually occurring on planet Earth. We are today destroying the very fabric of life upon which we depend. And we kind of act like we have a luxury about whether or not we decide to protect nature, as if it's a choice. Depuis que j'ai eu mon, mon fils, Ça m'a fait un réveil. Comment qu'il va vivre? Est-ce qu'il va pouvoir pagayer sur la même rivière, boire la même eau que j'ai bu? Est-ce qu'il va pouvoir le pratiquer lui aussi? C'est des questions que je me pose. 